Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunk of Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing how the Dallas Mavericks were able to turn around their season and how they could potentially be a dark horse team to come out of the Western Conference. But before we get started with today's episode, if you are new to our YouTube channel or listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, do me a quick favor by like, commenting, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any other streaming platform, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. I would greatly appreciate it that but without further ado let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks because they're currently the fifth seed in the Western Conference with the chance to move up in this final stretch of the NBA season Dallas heading into the year there wasn't too much optimism about the fate of this team right you know they didn't have any substantial roster shakeups there was questions about whether or not the Luka Doncic and Kristoff Porzingis pairing was going to be a good match for the future and the current present not to mention you were also dealing with the losses of your general manager and your former head coach in Rick Carlisle stepping down and resigning from his head coaching positioning as a Dallas Mavericks head coach. There wasn't a lot of optimism about this team heading into the season. And I think when you looked at the rest of the Western Conference with teams like the Phoenix Suns now being a uh, top contender in a respected conference, you knew that the uh, Memphis Grizzlies were going to be a threat to be reckoned with. And not to mention, you know, those teams like the Utah Jazz and the Los Angeles Lakers, who seemingly look like they've shown some bit of improvements with the addition of Russell Westbrook heading into the season. And the Dallas Mavericks not really bringing in any substantial changes to their current roster. There just wasn't a whole lot of optimism about this team being anything better than a first round playoff exit. And to start the season out, those narratives kind of continue to live on. You know, they start out the season 15 and 15. You know, they offensive efficiency wasn't there. And even till this day, they aren't the greatest offensive minded team in the entire NBA, but they are a lot more adequate than what they have been to begin the season. And I think there's been a number of proponents as to how the Dallas Mavericks have been able to, you know, kind of turn their season around, starting with Jason Kidd as a head coach, you know, him being the new voice in the locker room. He seems more so like a player's coach, obviously, with the fact that, you know, he was a former former NBA player, now a Hall of Famer in uh, NBA history. And, you know, he's also a proven champion. He's a respectable guy within the locker room, a guy that Luka Doncic can take seriously and look up to and, you know, definitely take his advice and just really want to listen to all the things that and knowledge that, you know, he would um, kind of give to a guy like Luka Doncic. And I think he did a great job at the time that Christoph Porzingis was on a member of this ball club and just making sure that he's there for them. He's going to do everything in his power. It is possible to be able to, you know, turn around his narrative around him as an individual and help him be in the best possible position as an offensive basketball player because Kristaps Porzingis he definitely has been one of the biggest issues as to why this Dallas Mavericks team has underperformed so mightily in years past the fact that Kristaps Porzingis was a guy who wasn't able to really elevate Luka Doncic's game because when you're bringing in a guy like Kristaps Porzingis who's getting paid 34 35 million dollars a year and he's an all-star caliber power forward the Dallas Mavericks were looking for him to kind of be the guy right next to Luka Doncic that can help elevate this Dallas Mavericks unit and they can ride into the sunset as being potentially a top 10 top 5 duo in the entire NBA and since they never were able to really achieve those type of heights that's why this Dallas Mavericks team has looked so poor or not as adequate as a lot of people thought in years past and there's obviously some other components that we can look to as far as you know them not being that decorated defensively only being offensive minded or Carlisle in the past, guys being misutilized or underutilized, and just everyone just being the offense being so Luka Doncic centric. We can obviously look at those things, but I think Kristaps Porzingis' absence and the fact that you know he didn't really live up to the hype in terms of you know what he was gonna provide for this Dallas Mavericks team on the offensive end and defensively, those are big reasons why this Dallas Mavericks team has been a current first round exit for years past. But in the event that you know he didn't play in games this season the dallas mavericks actually looked a lot more cohesive offensively and i also want to give credit to jason kidd from this perspective too because he's done a great job in terms of lifting the roles of guys like jalen brunson allowing him to you know kind of emerge into a reliable secondary ball handler secondary initiator of this dallas mavericks half court offense that we know definitely is in need of guys who can you know do a little bit of creation for others and individually and kind of knock down shots and take pressure off of luka Doncic from a half court setting aside from the emergence of Jalen Brunson obviously 
we have to talk about what this Dallas Mavericks team has looked like from a defensive perspective because that has been probably the biggest reason as to why they've been able to turn their season around um, evidently. And heading into the year, the Dallas Mavericks team, I don't think that they were that bad defensively. I just think that, you know, coming into the year, there was a little bit of people were still trying to get acclimated into, you know, the new scheming and the things that, you know, Jason Kidd was implementing. Kind of similar to, you know, what Boston was dealing with with Ime Udoku being the new voice in the locker room there. You know, it, it kind of takes time for these type of things to gel and guys to understand the new system and things of that nature. And I think Dallas was one of those teams that was kind of going through those hardships at that time. But now you're starting to see them finally come into their own. And, you know, there's a lot of positives coming into fruition. This is a currently the top six defense in the entire NBA. And offensively, they've done a great job in terms of just improving from that standpoint. They're still currently overall 18th in offensive rating, I believe, at the time of this recording. But, you know, they're 10th in net rating, 6th in defense. And there's a lot of optimism about this team heading into the postseason. And defensively, the reason why they've been so great, aside from the scheming that Jason Kidd's been able to implement, you have multiple point of attack defenders and guys like Reggie Bullock who can provide a lot of defensive versatility for you a guy who can essentially guard one through four one through three maybe even some power forwards uh and utilize his long wingspan and his disruptiveness out on the perimeter and Dorian Finney-Smith has done a tremendous job just being the exterior anchor for this defense um from a defensive perspective you know he's done a tremendous job in terms of, you know just being the dirty guy on the perimeter and you know just kind of covering up some of the weaknesses that Luka Doncic might provide and the fact that you know Jalen Brunson's also a guy who can give you some defensive production um, on that side of the basketball, despite, you know, the height disadvantage at six foot six one. The Dallas Mavericks has just been so good defensively because of some of those guys. And not to mention their interior presences in the front court setting with Dwight Powell and Maxi Klebe. Maxi Klebe, one of the more underrated defenders in the entire NBA. This is a guy that can essentially guard one through four, maybe even some fives. He can switch in, the, in pick and roll scenarios, do a great job in terms of limiting guys from mid-range jump shots. Being a, not necessarily a rim protector, but a rim deteriorant. Um, and same thing with Dwight Powell, you know, Dwight, offensively has been tremendous this season and you know he's been a, a great help to a guy like Luka Doncic in a half court setting in pick and roll scenarios when you're running Spain pick and roll and allowing Dwight Powell to you know finish the basketball above the rim and lob scenarios and things of that nature and I think all of that stuff is a big proponent as to why the Dallas Mavericks have been able to turn their season around. And with the absence of Kristaps Porzingis, this team was actually kind of able to find themselves true identity and actually be able to maximize the offensive capabilities that they have because this Dallas Mavericks team typically runs a spread offense that that emphasizes a lot of spacing. You're gonna have multiple ball handlers ideally operating in the pick and roll scenarios and looking to either get downhill, create shots for themselves individually, or kick out opposite to guys in the corners and opposite wings. And with Kristaps Porzingis being in the middle of all that action, it kind of hurt the ability for guys like you know Jalen Brunson to get to that mid-range jump shot. Luka Doncic to have the proper spacing to really be able to maximize his offensive capabilities. And it also hurt the, this team from an off-ball movement standpoint because the fluidity of the offense kind of dies when you have to go to a guy like Kristaps Porzingis and implementing the basketball into him in, in the low post, the low block area. And it wasn't even something that, you know, they tr really benefited all that much from. Not to mention, Kristaps Porzingis, in his absence, this ball club was 51 and 33 in his three years as a Dallas Mavericks. And not to mention, he was also a guy that only played in 43% of their regular season games. So I think, you know, in his absence, they finally learned how to really maximize the overall capabilities of this ball club and really be able to showcase what they can do from an offensive perspective and defensively is something that they're going to uh, hang their hats on offensively we understand that there's some efficiency issues they still need much more efficient ball handlers and guys who can knock down shots from beyond the arc because they haven't been shooting the basketball all that well this season but in the event that, you know, this Dallas Mavericks team heads into the postseason, I think that they could possibly be a dark horse team to come out of the Western Conference for a number of reasons. Obviously, number one being the defensive uh, capabilities that this team has. Obviously, you know, they limit their opponents it's from a scoring perspective because they're second in allowed points per game on the season. Not to mention, you know, they're going to limit possessions because they're the slowest paced offense in the entire league. And with them being disruptors defensively limiting possessions, you're not going to have the opportunity to really get 
put them in situations where they're going to get in a shootout um, from an offensive perspective. Not to mention, you know, this team also has a lot of spacing, so they're going to have opportunities to really um, emphasize, you know, and maximize their scoring capabilities, although they're not one of the better teams from that perspective anyway. And then lastly, the balance and the continuity of this ball club. There's no more egos in the locker room. I think they're, everybody's a lot more interconnected now. And I trust Jason Kidd until this point, you know, kind of do make the proper defensive adjustments to help put this team in the best possible position for them to you know, make it possibly to the Western Conference Finals this year in the event that, you know, they make a deep postseason run. Now, there obviously are some weaknesses with this team. Obviously, offensively, they're not the most decorated team in terms of talent there definitely is a deficit from that perspective and there's a lot of pattern players on this ball club and things of that nature and i think some of the weaknesses for this team heading into the postseason number one is the fact that they only have one all-star caliber player on this ball club and the fact that you know this is a team that has a noticeable talent deficit compared to you know the rest of the teams in the western conference you're kind of, you know, banking on Luka Doncic to kind of take things home for you. And he's shown the ability to kind of do that for you in a playoff setting. But I don't think that the Dallas Mavericks can solely hang their hat on that. The other issue that I find with this ball club is the fact that, you know, this is a team that also has a very hard time in terms of, you know, sustaining leads. You know, Luka Doncic, the moment he comes out of the game, it, it seems like the opposing team is going on a 15-0 run and, you know, fighting their way back into the uh, uh, event and everything. And, you know, I I think come postseason, that could be something that can really come back to bite them and hurt them. Because in, in the event that you go up against a disciplined team like the Memphis Grizzlies, the Golden State Warriors, or the Phoenix Suns that do a great job in terms of, you know, uh, opening that cushion and making sure that they don't blow leads and just stay in discipline from that standpoint, they, the Dallas Mavericks could find themselves in a hole that they might not be able to dig themselves out of. And, and with Dallas being one of the slowest teams in the entire NBA, if not the slowest team in the entire NBA, if they find themselves in a situation where come postseason, they're uh, playing up against a faster ball club like the Memphis Grizzlies or the Phoenix Suns that rank top three, top five in pace, they could find themselves in a bit of a rut situation trying to limit the scoring uh, opportunities for those ball clubs that are trying to get out in transition and trying to, you know, just maximize the amount of possessions that they can get from an offensive perspective. More importantly, this is a team that's 15th in offensive efficiency. I, I know that we talked about, you know, them not being the most decorated offensive team in the entire league, but, you know, a 2.9 point differential between offense and defense is definitely something that shows a little bit of a concern. But I think other than that, come this postseason, the fact that, you know, this is a team that has shown the ability to limit their opponent's scoring. Um, they've been a resilient ball club because they're 14th in double digit comebacks this season, and they've been fifth in opponent three point percentage. So they're doing a great job in terms of closing out and alleviating teams um, outside shooting and making sure they're not getting beat on three-point shots rather than two-point shots i think that is all a proponent as to why the dallas mavericks have a pretty good shot in terms of making it to the western conference finals this season but you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section can the dallas mavericks be a team that could potentially make it to the western conference finals let alone maybe an nba finals but other than that it's your boy nicey chunga benny you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out